obviously if we use the polynomial based functions then this uh, data set or, or these two classes can be separated suppose if we use a quadratic or a degree 3 polynomial then obviously it can separate the uh, it can separate these two data sets but now here uh, we cannot uh, decide that what should be the degree of the polynomial if we use say a degree 10 polynomial or degree say degree 7 polynomial then it's quite possible that uh, the pol the polynomial may overfit this problem and uh, it's, uh, in, th in this lecture I am not going to discuss about the overfitting and underfitting and therefore uh, I am not discussing about the model selection so the main point or the main emphasis of this lecture is to show the benefits of using the kernel perceptron learning algorithm obviously uh, with some degree of polynomial we can obviously separate these two classes but if we have the kernels then we don't need to construct the basis functions so this is a result of linear uh, of uh, using the linear basis functions uh, and both the perceptron and voter perceptron will fail because we're using linear basis functions and the data set is not linearly separable but if we use a, a certain high uh, degree polynomial then obviously we can separate these two classes by simple perceptron and the voter perceptron learning algorithm So here is the result of using the kernel perceptron learning algorithm in this data set. So in kernel perceptron learning algorithm, we don't need to construct the basis functions. And, and this is the main benefit of using kernels instead of hand coding the basis functions. So here's a figure which shows just a zero level contour. And as we can see, the kernel perceptron learning algorithm performs very well in separating uh, this kind of data set. So here comes the kernel perceptron learning algorithm. So here are certain things such as RKHS theorem, Mercer kernels and representative theorem that I will discuss in the ARL 1011 course. Since these are uh, advanced topics, so uh, this will not be covered in the machine learning channel. So a general uh, decision rule for the perceptron learning, uh, kernel perceptron learning algorithm is that the class of a training instance X is decided by the uh, the sign function of sum over all the training instances that is sum over all i i from 1 to n alpha i times k of x i comma x where k is a kernel matrix or the kernel function and here alpha i is some weight assigned to the ith instance and the alpha i is non-zero only for those training instances on which the error was made suppose for the training instance x t if no error was made uh, during the learning on the training instance x t then the vector uh, alpha t for the training instance x t would be zero so the general decision rule is that the class of training instance x is given by the sig sign function of sum over i from 1 to n alpha i times k of x i comma x where k is a kernel function So a simple uh, kernel matrix or the gram matrix uh, whose components k, i, j is given as the inner product of the feature vectors uh, for x, i and x, j. So we will see that uh, it, it's, uh, it is not necessary to use the inner product um, of the base functions. There is an inner product kernel function. We can use any kind of kernel. There is a Gaussian kernel. In fact, the figure that I had shown was obtained using the Gaussian kernel. So the derivation of this learning rule, that is the learning rule uh, sine function of sum over i from 1 to n alpha i times k of xi comma x, it can be easily derived. Uh, so consider this inner product, that is inner product of the weight factor w and the training instance x or the uh, instance x for which the decision is to be made. So w uh, times x is given as inner product of sum over i from 1 to n alpha i times x i comma x the inner product of these two quantities that is this term and this term and which is given as sum over i from 1 to n alpha i times inner product of x i comma x where the above uh, equation 
comes from the learning rule of the perceptron learning algorithm perceptron learning algorithm updates the weight vector wt which is given as wt is equal to wt minus 1 plus y times xi so so finally we can derive that uh, w is equal to sum over all i y i times x i where y and x i are the training instances for which the algorithm made errors during the learning and therefore the scalar alpha i which is assigned to each training instance x i takes care for deciding that which training instance uh, resulted in error during the learning phase of the algorithm so applying feature mapping uh, to x that is instance of uh, taking inner product of w and x we take inner product of w and phi of x where phi is a feature vector certain feature vector and applying the feature mapping phi will give us that inner product of w and phi of x is sum over all i here make this correction this is small this is not a small n this is capital n so it is given as sum over i from 1 to capital n alpha i times inner product of phi of x i comma phi x and hence the result uh, is derived that is the learning rule which is sine of sum over i from 1 to n alpha i times k of x i comma x here the kernel function is basically the inner product between the phi x i and the phi x but in general we can use any kernel that is we can use Gaussian kernel we can use Altinom kernel we can use any valid kernel so the kernel matrix for this particular example can be taken as the inner product of phi xi and phi x where k of xi comma x is inner product of phi of xi uh, and phi x so the result is derived and here we can choose any kind of kernel So here's a kernel perceptron learning algorithm and this is a core learning part of the kernel perceptron learning algorithm. If yi times sum over all k from 1 to n alpha k times k of xi comma xk is less than or equal to 0 that is if the error is made on the training instance xi and yi then the alpha i that is alpha i for the training instance xi is updated and is given by alpha i plus yi. So this is the core learning part of this kernel perceptron learning algorithm and from here you can download the MATLAB code of this algorithm. So here's the result of using the kernel perceptron learning algorithm. The kernel used was a Gaussian kernel with sigma square equal to 1 and here's the result on the data set that I introduced earlier in this lecture. And here is the contour level showing just a zero level contour. And here we can see the kernel perceptron learning algorithm with Gaussian kernel with sigma square equal to 1 perform quite well in this kind of data set. And let us uh, take another example. So here uh, let us construct a data set. Uh, Here is my code for constructing the data set. And so I am using 100 instance, uh, 100 instances in class 1. Let me construct this class 1 of the data set. And now let us recite the class second, second class of the data set. And again I am using 100 instances in class second. 